Now I have um, one reader question and the reader asked, can you really fall in love in six to eight episodes? Um, you know what, the episodes are about three days, but you know sometimes in real life even I've fallen in love in like a week or two. So I definitely think that you can fall in love in just like six to eight episodes, which is about like three weeks, because um, you just can. I mean, it just depends. But like, also when you're in these type of environments, like you're only surrounded with that one person, and that's like all you're thinking about. There's no outside distractions. Um, so it's really like a fast way. Even with castmates, I felt like I just really got to know them really fast. Like, mm -hmm. and I felt like really strong friendship bonds. Like you know, closer than I have with some of my own friends at home. So it's like, I do think that bonds just form really fast in those type of environments. Now, you know, mo most of what I write about is music. So I would, I would be remiss not to ask, you know, a lot, a lot of reality stars eventually go into putting out a single or making music. Is that anything that's ever crossed your mind at any moment going into music? Um, well, I'm not musically talented at all, so I think... <laughs> at least you know. Some people don't know that. <laughs> if I tried to sing. Um, but I would, like, I mean, I try to do other things, like I'm writing a book right now. Right. And it's about my reality TV experiences, the tentative titles, Reality Interrupted. So um, I think it's good if you have this following, like, you know, a Twitter following or whatever your following is, it's important to, like, utilize it because otherwise... You're just putting yourself out there and, you know, for no reason. So it is important to, like, release some type of product or try to make some kind of impact using your influence for a positive thing um, and making a difference somehow. Can you tell us a little bit about the book, what, what we are um, maybe... Well, the book is really about my journey through the reality TV world mm -hmm. and um, along the way and everything that I faced good and, you know, some really bad things and some hardships that I had to go through based on my reality TV experiences. Um, you know, I had like a very challenging year after Bachelor Pad 3. It was just a really difficult time for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've had to go to therapy over it and like it's just been a really like, you know, I'm in a really good place right now, but I haven't always been in this good of a place. And so the book will go through like my journeys. You know, I don't want to give away too much, but the book will talk about like my journey kind of through the reality world and how I got to where I am now and like the road bumps that I really faced along the way. I have two questions. One, if you could do it over again, would you do the reality road? Yeah, I always wonder about it. Um, and it's so hard to imagine my life without it because like I said, it's been seven years. Mm -hmm. But I do think if I could do it over again, I would, I would do it. But I might have like decided when I did The Bachelor to be a little bit just more myself, you know what I mean, and seeing, hey, I'm just going to be me. I might not have gotten, like, the same amount of ratings or attention or anything, but I would I would have, you know, preferred to be just more of myself the whole time and to see how people really reacted to me. In, in a way, that would make you more vulnerable than you are when you're playing this type of character. Mm -hmm. Now, I write about fashion, and you were known for wearing your tiaras. Tell right. How, how that came about and what happened to the tiara? Well, I only wore the tiara originally to an audition as a joke because Lorenzo Borghese was a prince. And so I said, okay, here I am in my tiara. You know, I'm a princess. I'm ready to date him. And the producers just loved the tiara. And so they were like, oh, my God, please tell me you wear that thing all the time. And I was like, actually, I don't. And they're like, well, we want you to wear it the entire time on the season. And so, I mean, I'm like being a good sport, and I just went along with it. And it just became kind of my trademark. And so I made a line called Tierica. And my biggest mistake with the line was I wanted to only use, like, real diamonds and real gold. And I was, you know, not realizing that the people that wanted to buy them wouldn't be able to afford a tiara that's, like, several thousand dollars. So it was just a really bad marketing decision of me. If I could do it again, I would make tiaras, you know, that are affordable for everyone to have. And so you don't wear tiaras, is that what no, I No, I really can't think of the last time. I think that there was a time that I wore a tiara, like, I forget why I was wearing it. I think maybe on New Year's I wore, like, some type of New Year's mm -hmm. tiara or something. Um, so I'll wear it, like, if it's an appropriate occasion, like New Year's Eve or, you know, if it's my birthday or something. But I won't just wear one, like, just to wear one okay. anymore. Right. I've so outgrown it. I'm 30 years old now.
exactly. <laughs> the world, Erica does not wear tiaras around in Houston, okay? Yes. Um, what about your wardrobe? Has that changed much since being on reality TV? Has what changed? Your wardrobe? Um, my wardrobe, you know, I mean, I guess I have, like, on camera, you can only wear, like, like solid colors or, like, things, um, not prints, not a lot of white, so I guess my wardrobe is, like, well-suited for that. But in general, in terms of my wardrobe, I just like to wear outfits that, like, flatter my body type. Um, I'm not one that, like, is a slave to any type of fashion trend or anything. In fact, I don't even really consider myself to be like that high fashion of a person. Mm -hmm. um, I just care about like what looks good on me. I like to wear a lot of bright colors. I love summer because I love wearing little summer dresses. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the weather in Houston. It's not too hot for me. So it's definitely my favorite season for sure. What would you say to somebody, and you touched on this a little bit when you were talking about you would be yourself the, the next time around if you were to do a reality show, but what would you say to someone who's looking to be on a reality show, who's trying out for a reality show, who's hoping to get on something like that? Well, if someone's auditioning, I do always say, um, be yourself, but be a more interesting version of yourself. So just, like, find, figure out, like, those things that, like, make you unique and funny and, like, eccentric and over the top and really, like, accentuate those characteristics and think of it like, you know, how you're going to relate to people. Like, what's your character? Like, what's your persona like how would someone stereotype you and it's almost like you have to be like a character of yourself or like a stereotype of yourself like because you're not going to come across as multifaceted because that's too complicated you know to portray to people watching so you have to almost be like a little one-dimensional character of yourself and like that you know a parody of yourself and that's what I became and then it was really confusing because you start acting that way in real life and you almost go through a sort of thing like that's why my book is called Reality Interrupted. There's a time period where your reality is interrupted, and you're like, oh, my God, like, you go through, like, an existential crisis, and you're like, who am I? Like, am I this character of myself? Or, like, you start forgetting, like, who you really are. It's very weird. Who is Erica Rose? Um, I think, you know, I've been having to spend a lot of time this past year rediscovering that. But I think that um, I'm a really good daughter and a good sister and a really good friend um, and I'm fun and um, funny my friend's trying to tell me things to say <laughs> Why does the fam we need to see the friend wanna say hi no. say she doesn't want to say hi okay. <laughs> she's shy okay um, but yeah I'm creative and fun and smart and very deep and very spiritual and open-minded and really non-judgmental and I think those are all things that people wouldn't necessarily know about me just from watching me on TV. Right, right. Now I have to ask you also, what, what type of music do you like when you crank up your car or no. your iPod? What do you no. listen to? What My favorite know? is like alternative music. Like I love 94.5 The Buzz. That's my favorite station. But mm -hmm. I'll also listen to some 96.5 and some like, you know, pop music on like 95.7 or 104. Um, just anything I can like sing to, anything that has really good lyrics. I'm not a big fan of like hip hop. Recently I've been trying to expand my horizons to more country music. Just because I live in Texas, I might as well. <laughs> if you had a theme song, what would it be? My theme song? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess this is so cheesy, oh my god. That but I guess my good. theme song is like I Will Survive because I feel like I've just survived a lot, honestly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Awesome. I think this kind of wraps it up. Yeah. Um, thank you, Erica Rose, uh, for joining us for Joey Guerra and Joy Sewing for the Why I Love Google Hangout series. And Erica, tell people where and how they can sort of keep up with you and what you're doing and the progress on your book and all right. that good stuff. Um, everyone can keep up with me at my website. It's the ericarose.com. Or at Twitter, um, at Erica the Rose, and I'll continue to update about my book, Reality Interrupted, and that will be out late this year. And you can follow Joey on Twitter at at Joey Guerra, J O E Y G U E R R A. And you can follow me on Twitter on at Joy J O Y Sewing S E W I N G. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Erica. It's Thank you. always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye.